The sun is the nearest star to Earth. It's a majestic giant natural fusion reactor providing almost all of our energy, either directly or indirectly. It's over a staggering million kilometers wide and its mass counts for 99.86% of the entire solar system. The sun is approximately 150 million kilometers away from Earth, a distance that takes light slightly over 8 minutes to travel. While the sun is the most prominent object in our solar system, in our stellar neighborhood it's just a bit over average. Interstellar distances are immense and to get to the nearest star after our sun you will need to travel over 40 trillion kilometers. A distance so vast it would take light traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second over 4 years to get there. There being Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star smaller, cooler and less massive than our sun. Red dwarfs burn a slower fusion process than our sun and live thousands of times longer than our sun will. Because of the slower fusion it emits far less light than the sun, so much less that from earth it's too dim to see with the naked eye. Because of this Proxima Centauri wasn't discovered until 1915. In 2016 a planet inside her habitable zone was found and dubbed Proxima Centauri b. Whether or not the remote planet is actually habitable remains to be seen. Proxima is part of the trinary star system Alpha Centauri. From Proxima to the next star in that system is only 13,000 times the distance from the Sun to the Earth, an interstellar baby step. We have now reached the Alpha Centauri system, a double star being orbited by Proxima. The two stars of Alpha Centauri, A and B, are more similar to the Sun than Proxima. A is of the exact same classification as the Sun, though slightly bigger, while B is of the cooler orange dwarf class. It's suspected to have a planet of its own, though no solid evidence has been presented. This planet would orbit so close to its parent star it would have a hellish surface. Leaving Alpha Century, the next closest star is Barnard's star, another red dwarf six light years away, named after the American astronomer Edward Barnard. Its radial velocity towards the sun exceeds 100 km per second and is the largest of any star ever measured. Barnard's star has no suspected planets. Our next neighbor is a binary system in the constellation Vela, discovered only as recently as 2013, called Lumen 60. This isn't exactly a star system though, it contains two substellar objects known as brown dwarfs. Brown dwarfs are stars that don't have enough mass to sustain nuclear fusion. These dwarfs have a very low temperature, barely high enough to melt copper, which is very low considering stellar standards. Passing another substellar object, we arrive at Wolf 359. Yet another red dwarf star, a bit under 8 light years away, constellation Leo. While the star has no known planets, it has often been used as a setting in sci-fi, such as Star Trek and the Outer Limits. At 8.3 light years, we pass another red dwarf, Lalanda 21185. Lalanda has one suspected planet, however, it lies outside the habitable zone. Then, at 8.58 light years, we finally reach Sirius, the brightest star in our sky. She's twice as large and massive as our sun. Her luminosity being over 25 times that of our sun. Sirius is also a binary star containing the closest degenerate star to our sun. A degenerate star like Sirius B is a star which is no longer capable of supporting nuclear fusion in its core. Before this star died it was a 5 solar mass B class star until it went supernova about 120 million years ago. No evidence suggesting planets in the Sirius system has been found. At 8.72 light years we find the binary system of Uten 726 8 2. Two red dwarfs, its possible member of the Hayata stream, a large scattered group of stars sharing a similar trajectory to the Hayata's cluster. At 9.68 light years, we find Ross 154, yet another red dwarf with no suspicions of planets. Ross 248, a red flower star, lies at 10.3 light years. Once again, this star has no suspected planets. At 10.5 light years from the Sun, we find the system Epsilon Eridani. 10.5 light years corresponds to approximately 100 trillion kilometers. Epsilon Eridani is a very young orange K class star. It's around 400 million years old, meaning it's in the latest stages of forming a planetary system that millions of years from now could perhaps support life. Thus far, massive asteroid belts and two unconfirmed planets have been found around this star. Last but not least, Lakai 9352, a red dwarf star in the constellation of Pisces, 10.74 light years from Earth. And those are the 12 stellar systems closest to Earth. Space is big, and most of all, very empty. Considering that 11 light years has a spherical volume of over 5000 light years, containing only 17 stars. The density of interstellar space is measured in atoms per cubic meter. That's how truly empty space is. Mere atoms, spread thinly over trillions of kilometers. And that was it for this video, I will see you guys in the New Year's video.